Act. Professor Chaffman, it's very good to meet you here in Grand Rapids. You are the author of a very important book, Faith and Liberty, the Economic Thought of the Late Scholastics. What's the greatest lesson uh, when it comes to the relationship between virtue, Christian virtue, and economic freedom that we can learn from the late scholastics? Well, the basic thing you can learn from the late scholastics is the importance of grandeur economic theory on the true notion of the, of the human being. Uh, they were great champions of, of private property and part of the message for the economics and ethics come together is, you know, that you have to learn to treat your neighbor, you know, and love your neighbor as yourself, you know, and God above all. And uh, from treating your workers well, from respecting uh, contracts, from not seeking privilege from government, there's a lot of uh, lessons that we can learn from these authors from the late Middle Ages from the Catholic Church, you know, both Dominican, Jesuits, Franciscans, all share similar beliefs in favor of what we would call today an ordered free market. There is a widespread prejudice that Christianity, by condemning greed, it can also sometimes condemn forms of capitalism that have been flourishing in the Western world. What do you make of St. Paul's uh, comment about the love for the money being the root of all, the, all evil, and of course the other comment about uh, those who don't work can't really eat? Um, how can we reconcile these two commandments? Well, uh, the, what not only is in Paul, but there were other passages in the Bible that it's harder for a rich to be able to go to heaven, you know, than a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Uh, this is in the same part where the Gospels speak about that if you don't hate father or mother, you're not worthy of the kingdom of God. But how can that be if there is a commandment, you shall Love. honor father and mother? So. The whole idea is, if you, some people put money, some people put power, some people put sex, whatever you put, or even family, you have a, God called you to be a priest, you have to be a priest. <laughs> no, you cannot say, oh, let me think about it. You know, if you meet God, you do what God wants. So that is what St. Paul and our other great Christians uh, were, were saying. So uh, greed is uh, an inorderly appetite for, for money and wealth, and that, that has to be condemned by, not only by Catholic moralists, but by other moralists. I don't like so much the word capitalism. When the free market and the free society evolved, no one used the word capitalism in the American founding fathers. No one. No one used... So it's a 19th century term. Uh, well, Marx started to use this capitalist system of production, and from there people started using the term. I will give my life for liberty, for truth, for my family. I would not give my life for, a cap for capital, for the means of production. It's very important. Capitalism can be a word, as John Paul II, Gay Carlo Wojtyla, uh, wrote in Point 42 of Centesimo Sanus, that if by capitalism we mean a system of free, free markets, private property within the rule of law, then it is consistent with the Catholic doctrine. But he would prefer another term like free economy or sure. such. So I belong a little bit to, to that, to that school. school of thought that why use the term capitalism? I prefer words that have to do with liberty, the free society, the free economy. Apart from being a scholar, you, uh, Professor Chafuen, you are very much involved in setting up networks of uh, think tanks that promote freedom and responsibility across the world. Your work with Atlas Foundation has been very rewarding. Can you tell us a few words about this? Yeah, we believe, again, I, this is my theory of why things happen. You know, things happen for four things. Ideas, incentives with the market, economic, economics incentives matter, interest, you know. Then leadership, ideas without action are just ideas. And finally, providence or luck. You know, and with providence you have to pray. But how do you work in the field of ideas to change a country? We believe that a professional outlook, have using good business practices to create and produce research and disseminate it, and educational programs like the one we are attending here at the Acton Institute with people from 85 countries, more than 800 people, you need to use sound business practices, intellectual entrepreneurship skills, we call them. So we try to find these young people and uh, give them some tools, if possible, try to get some funding for them. 
and through this uh, intermediary societies, the think tanks, public policy research centers, help change countries towards free and virtuous societies. Tell us a success story very quickly from your experience with Atlas, a country where such a think tank flourished and became very influential. I think one of my favorite in Europe, in, in Central Europe, I would say, is was the Lithuanian Free Market Institute. Uh, and again, it was interesting because uh, people who are donors or advisors from abroad sometimes can cause more harm than good. For a while, there was a disruption in our relationship with the Lithuanian Free Market Institute, and that was a period of growth because they learned to grow by themselves without our support. But we, we are so pleased with the work of the Lithuanian Free Market Institute that we even have a a free enterprise center, we call them, where we send people from Central Europe to train uh, to Lithuania to see how they were able to do it and how they were able to change the world, even influence sometimes government, like one of the executive directors of Lithuania Free Market Institute, and he was 36, he became oh. Minister of Justice yeah. at 36. Yeah. Uh, so again, uh, it's a fascinating life uh, that I have, you know, I thank God for the opportunity he gave me and good luck in Romania. I owe to Romania a lot of my scholarly studies because my great professor of history of thought was Oreste Popescu. Please tell us a few words uh, at the end because um, uh, not many Romanians nowadays know who Oreste Popescu was. Oreste Popescu emigrated when he was, you know, in, in middle age and not very old uh, to, to the Americas. After some time in the United States and as north of South America, he ended up in Argentina at the Catholic University. There he developed a whole project to study what the writings of priests and moralists of the Catholic Church in Latin America. As you know, Latin America was started in 1492. And even from the beginning, the priests were asking for free trade, uh, so that, again, speaking against the mercantilist policies of Spain. Uh, Popescu was not an ideological person, but in making me study these authors, and I found that, hey, most of what they say is consistent with the free market, uh, I said, well, after studying the Hispanic Americans, I said, I want to study where they studied in Europe. And you go, almost in each country, you will find that in the Middle Ages, in the followers of Aquinas and other writers uh, contributed greatly to the founding of economic science. So I owe my studies to this great Romanian, great scholar, very dedicated, careful, scholar Oreste Popescu who, who must have died five, six years ago more or less. So one of the lessons is that Christianity has uh, somehow encouraged not just uh, the appearance of science as someone like Pierre Dumo uh, Duhem uh, taught us, uh, Christianity also encouraged free markets, encouraged trade, encouraged uh, human flourishing in all sorts of ways and we owe it uh, to them, to the late scholastics and to others uh, this, this, this great heritage. We, we owe a lot. Again, they had little confusion in topics of interest. Great Christians, like any other, we are humans, we make mistakes. So I know that many Christians perhaps have contributed also to, to slow down progress in some periods of history. But again, I think within Christianity we can find the root of a free and prosperous society. Thank you very much, Professor Chapman, and good luck Thank with your you work. Man. Thank you. Thank you.